Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, get in on the ultimate steal before it's over, the new Jack Wolf Knives K9 Jack, and great knife designers, high end and low end. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. It's good to have you here with us. Thanks, as always, for watching. My favorite comment from last week was actually from last week's show, uh, The 10 Best Folders, and it's from Steve Sinclair, and he says... The 10 best folders for the first time knife owner are all Victorinox knives. Once you have learned to use a Swiss Army knife, you can diversify your knife collection to include Civivis and Bucks. The fact that no Victorinox knives were included in your video exposes you as a salesman for the knives you are pushing here and neither an expert on knives or, and I think he means nor, even a bona fide reviewer. Yeah. It cuts to the quick, Steve, but I have a couple of thoughts. And uh, first thought is, there is no such thing as a shill without a platform in the age of the internet. So all you have to do, sir, is turn on your camera and face it and start talking about Victorinox knives, man. People will listen. People are interested in the brand you represent. It's very popular. Also, uh, on that end, you call me a salesman, and yet you say... The first 10 knives someone must own must be a Victorinox. Who's the salesman? And lastly, I got to say, um, well, uh, sir, how do I get my bona fides? Where do I get uh, bona fides? I think that's how they say it uh, in knife reviewing. Is it, uh, is it university? Do I have to take out a student loan? I certainly hope not, but I'm going to start looking into it because I think I have to increase my credibility here as a guy on the internet giving his opinions about pocket knives. Steve Sinclair, thank you for your comments, sir. Now let's get to a pocket check. Today I was carrying a classic tactical knife from the early days of uh, the YouTube tactical, okay. What I mean by this is I was exposed to this through Nut and Fancy and then Jim Skelton and uh, some of the more early uh, reviewers, if I can use that word, of Knives Online. And it's the M1 by Combative Edge. Now, Combative Edge is a company out of the United States. They have their knives OEM'd uh, in Italy. This was Lion Steel. And uh, the gentleman who owns and runs the company is a martial artist, a Kali among the things he does. And... Um, started this company combative edge uh with without any uh subtlety to the name these are tactical knives and uh in my opinion this has always been my favorite of his designs though he has a number of cool ones uh, interesting thing about this is this is pre flipper uh perfection days so that flipper is more a finger guard so look this is how this knife flips so it does not it is not intended as a flipper you definitely need centrifugal force you know a little a little wrist whip or whatever to open this or you can just slow roll it you know like that uh, but this is made in italy by lion steel and it just has a beautiful fit and finish it's nice and thin that's an n690 blade n690 co nice recurve uh excellent swedge there so you get good penetration here i i always kind of call this a clip point uh though it I don't know. You, you know, uh, classifications of blades can get a little dicey, but to me, this is a clip point. Beautiful recurve, nice and thin. The one sticking point, I don't, I'm not crazy about that extra long pocket clip. It's a little, it's a little too much. It's the same pocket clip that they put on the old version of the Bastinelli Big Drag Attack. So it works fine, works great, but it's just a little bit obtrusive. Okay, secondly, uh, today I had my hog tooth Tonto on me, this knife. Uh, if you follow the newsletter, which you should, uh, we have uh, been rehabbing it now, or uh, putting it back out because I have an exciting project in the works with Matt Chase of Hog Tooth Knives. 
So I have been carrying this. I'll give you the quick and dirty. We're doing a collaboration knife based on this platform. I always talk about this knife. It's so great. Such a great fixed blade knife for everyday carry. And um, it is a very, very good user. I've used this for feather sticking and other things, even though I carry it around for, um, you know, it's tactical uh, qualities. And actually, I heard a very interesting story by Matt, which I will not say here, but this, this has been proven in the field um, overseas as a, a, a self-protection knife, we'll say. Um, so we're doing a collaboration of this knife where I am designing the blade and we're using this platform. It'll be the same size. It'll have my logo and his logo uh, on opposing sides and it'll, they will be serial numbered and we'll sell them right. Yeah. Or, you know, I'll sell them through a website, through the website. But uh, this is a great, great knife. This is one of the two knives uh, in my sprawling small fixed blade collection that gets the most carry. This one and the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. They're both just the perfect uh, size for in the waistband carry while remaining uh, large enough to be very capable uh, for a lot of things. Um, so love that knife. Lastly, uh, for emotional support today, I had an old one. I had the Tangram Santa Fe, and uh, I do love this Santa Fe. Uh, and I also was very fond of Tangram. It was um, Kaiser's Sen Cut, if you will. It was the, their super inexpensive line uh, beneath the Vanguard line, which has basically uh, absorbed this kind of production, I guess. Uh, so you don't see any Tangrams now. You can still buy some on Amazon. They're not fully sold out from years ago, but um, I think this is an amazing 25 bucks spent. Uh, it's got that Akudo steel. It's a Japanese steel called Akudo, and it's a um, 440C analog. So very nice blade steel. I love the um, the blade shape. It's a beautiful blade shape for utility and all sorts of things. The handle is great. A uh, really, really buttery washer action. Um, just a great knife and uh, a good one for fidget. It's a great, uh, what do you call it? Um, washer washer pivoted uh, fidget knife. So that's what I had on me today for uh, my ESK. So today it was the um, M1 by Combative Edge. It was the EDC Tanto by Hogtooth Knives. Look for a another version of, of this knife in the future with a blade of my design. And uh, and then the Sen Cut, not the Sen Cut, the, uh, the Tangram Santa Fe. Great, great knives. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, uh, check out the newsletter and uh, you will you will be kept up to date with how this project progresses with me and Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. Uh, just, a, just a little question uh, before we move on to Knife Life News. I was uh, at a little party last night with some neighbors and met someone new and, and he said, hey, my wife says you have a Johnny Knoxville vibe. A Johnny Knoxville vibe. I was like, wow, I've, I've heard uh, I've heard different things like uh, uh, people people said um, when I was younger, people said I looked like the guy from Friends, uh, the drippy one. And I can't remember his name, uh, but I had never heard Johnny Knoxville and I've never watched Jackass. Do I have a Johnny Knoxville vibe? I'm guessing. Uh, no, I think maybe they saw me be a smart ass with my kids or something. I'm not sure because uh, my kids were there uh, anyway. Weird, weird celebrity uh, parallel. Um, do I have it? I don't know. All right. If you're interested in helping support such nonsense uh, and other great, great content, uh, go to check us out on Patreon. Quickest way to get there is go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You can also scan the QR code. Uh, but there you'll see we have uh, three tiers of support. We're going to put more in. I keep saying that. I haven't done it yet. Uh, but uh, you get interview exclusives. You get entered into knife drawings uh, on the monthly, and uh, I've, we've been uploading some really cool Marshall Blade, uh, or it's not Marshall Blade Concepts, it's uh, it's actually um, Mastro Defense System and Kali knife videos uh, that, that has just started. So there, there are some cool things you can get. Uh, if you have the means and the interest, uh, go check it out, knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, whether you go to Patreon or not. Uh, just you sitting here listening. Uh, means the world to me. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. 
through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So as per usual, uh, Savivi <laughs> has more knives uh, coming out. It's like every week I'm, I'm, uh, I'm reading a new story about brand new Savivi knives. And I got to say, though I love my Savivis, um, I got to say they're starting to look a lot alike to me. Now, I don't know if that's just um, brand DNA shining through or if they really are indeed starting to look a lot the same. Uh, but that's just the impression I get. This this one on the bottom here, though, uh, let's see, which, which which one is that? OK, so two new flippers. This uh, let, me, let me start with the one on the top, uh, because I do like the fuller on that. I like that the fullers are being uh, fully recognized as opening methods. Uh, they're not just there to lighten the blade or stiffen the spine. Uh, they are indeed there as uh, opening you know, deliberate op opening method. And I think that that's pretty cool. So I, I do like this knife. Uh, it's also a um, in-house design and a flipper. But as we go down, the, I guess it's called the Savant, is the one that I really like. It's got a very simple profile and it has a drop point that drops the point more towards the center bottom of the cutting edge so that you don't have to tweak your hand at all for a pull cut. It's just going to present the uh, it's going to present the point down a little bit lower, so you can do those sort of pull cuts, those sort of drag cuts. And uh, I don't know, I'm start something I'm starting to appreciate because it does not uh, it it does not affect anything negatively, as far as I can tell, uh, with the performance of the knife. The knife, whereas an upswept blade sometimes can make it a, a, a hassle or or uh, make it more specialized for certain sort of motions. And uh, so to me, this is a very nice looking combination of sort of gents knife and utility knife. Utility being that low tip, that low point, and then the gents factor just being the very sleek, simple lines. That 3.47 inch uh, blade, it would be a you know pretty large uh, gents knife that's 14 c 28 and and i love the wood handle you know i have the praxis in wood with the black uh, blade and i just i think it's a very handsome combo so uh two new knives coming out from savivi uh i've mentioned the uh the last two shows i've mentioned savivis maybe, maybe i'll give them a break and and let them kind of release a whole bunch of them and then i can cover them all at once uh i want to make a reminder to you all about the ultimate steel uh it ends august 15th uh, I, I believe I thought originally it was August 18th. It's August 15th. Uh, you can tell by the counter there on the screen. But uh, you know the ultimate steal. The ultimate steal is the annual fundraising. Uh, I, I'm going to call it a sweepstakes because that's kind of what it is, uh, except for the fact that it's the sort of sweepstakes where everybody wins because you donate and you get something back, whether it's a, uh, you know, a small folder or you donate a little bit more and you win and you get to choose. Um, they have a whole bunch of prizes uh, donated by custom knife makers and knife companies, optic companies, I think firearms companies. They're, I think they might even have a safari, a safari on offer, um, but they, they just have some amazing, amazing prizes and you get to choose. So go over to uh, there's only a week left. Go over or less than a week, five days, I guess. Go over to uh, the ultimate steal on knife rights. I I'm uh, very, very excited about how. The Virginia law has changed to how it changed this very summer. And we're allowed to carry automatic knives thanks to knife rights and Doug Ritter. Uh, so that's why I'm going to go over to the uh, ultimate steal and donate. And I highly recommend you do too, so that we can keep this, uh, this going. They rely on this uh, to, they rely on this to keep going uh, honestly, because the uh, the money that he makes from the Ritter, uh, the RSK Mark I from Hogue, that goes to living, you know, so that he can uh, put funds, all the funds that are raised from knife rights into airline tickets. They have to drop thousands of dollars in last minute airline tickets because you never know when a legislator is going to be able to see you 
uh, or or when a legislature is going to be able to hear your case. So uh, they have they have lawyers, they have airline, they have a lot of stuff to pay for. So let's help knife rights. Ultimate steal, uh, less than a week to get in on it, and you benefit too uh, with really really cool prizes. All right, I just want to mention Hogue Knives, a brand I love. Uh, that I just mentioned has two new um, hunting knives out, and one of them is pretty interesting. the The Expel Scalpel uh, down towards the bottom of the article. It's a a G10 uh, affair with uh, a, a uh, an armature underneath that holds scalpel blades. So it's a replaceable blade system. I I am not a hunter. I could see how that would be extremely useful, uh, but I'm also a knife lover, and I think uh, having Having a regular blade that you have in baby for years and sharpen and change the shape of through use is also uh, kind of a romantic notion. I, I think the expel scalpel is a very interesting and practical thing. We've seen this from other, uh, you know, m much less, uh, you know, high end companies, but it's cool to see Hogue uh, putting their their hat in the ring for this. By the way, those scalpel blades are pretty wicked looking. Uh, but we go to the top of the article, the extract. This is a really uh, handsome and useful looking um, little clip point blade. And actually, I saw this one and uh, picked it up and, you know, hefted it at uh, Blade Show. And to say heft it, it is an overstatement because it's a featherweight and it's very thin. And I believe Stasa got one while he was there and he's had it in some of his videos. But this is a it's got a, a very minimal plastic sheath. This is a drop in the front pocket and forget it's there kind of fixed blade. But it's got a 3.3 inch blade. It's a, you know, so it's definitely capable. And you see that's a full sized handle. So you can get a full grip on that. Um, so whether you're using it for dressing out an animal or or you're just dropping it in your pocket uh, like Stasa does and using it as a uh, EDC fixed blade, I really uh, like the look of this. I gotta say the one thing I'm not crazy about is the Cerakote, but, but it can be had without uh, without the color. So two cool new hunting knives from Hogue uh, I wanted to point out. Last thing I want to point out is uh, a, a story that is, uh, boy, it has, uh, it has me at mixed emotions, uh, part, partly heartwarming um, and then partly horrifying. Uh, this is the Las Vegas smoke shop clerk who uh, killed a robber uh, with a knife. And uh, these two guys, uh, you can see the video. We're not going to show it here, but you can go on online and see it but these uh these two guys with full-on balaclavas uh walk into this uh, smoke shop and start stealing stuff and then one guy jumps over the counter and uh, johnny nguyen the guy behind the counter pulls out a knife a uh, folding knife i was trying to identify it uh, but the footage is kind of fuzzy and he stabs the guy seven times and i think the guy's dead and you can hear the guy uh apparently lamenting and and that kind of thing on the floor and i say heartwarming and horrifying i, I don't mean to be um callous about the loss of any life even if it's you know a scumbag criminal uh life is a life and human life is is sacred but man i like knowing that people are fighting back he saw this other guy got his arm blown off uh just walking into a store and pointing a gun at someone the, the clerk shoots his arm off with a shotgun and uh the guy runs out I'll, I'll exasperate it like the fact that this is happening and that people are fighting back is heartwarming to me that but what is hard to watch and harsh to watch is is what it takes to actually rebuff someone this guy jumps over the counter in this smoke shop and uh the 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 gentleman behind the counter can only assume that his life is in danger and does he have to sit around and wait to be attacked uh, directly with a weapon before he can respond? I, I say no. And that's why, to me, I say this is heartwarming because the guy got what's coming to him. And, and I, you know, I, I, it, I really, I, I, it pains me to say that because, uh, you know, like I said, if this, if this, uh, young dude is dead, there, there was a chance for him to turn things around, uh, before he jumped over that counter. But man, anyway, I just wanted to, show this story because yes knives can be used as weapons yes they can effectively be brought to bear and they were here and yes he stabbed him in the back and yes it was nasty but hey man his life was on the line what would you do
Uh, okay, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast uh, in the state of the collection. Uh, I want to show you the new Jack Wolf Knives, K9 Jack. And then we're going to take a look at some of the best designers, my favorite designers, high-end and low-end options. Coming up here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I got this beautiful white box this week shaped perfectly like the uh, Jack Wolf Knives box. And it was very exciting to me. Looked at the return address, and indeed, that's where it came from. And I was very excited because that means a new Jack Wolf Knives knife had arrived, and I knew which one it was. And it's the dog leg, the canine jack. A dog leg jack has this sort of curved handle. And uh, I must admit, I had mixed feelings because it's never been one of my favorite patterns visually. I've never owned one and never really understood the benefit of the dog leg jack, which I'm going to tell you about. Uh, in just a second. So this arrived and I was immediately dazzled by the beautiful twill carbon fiber. What's that you say? Beautiful carbon fiber. Yes, that's right. I think this is beautiful. That twill is awesome. Uh, and in black and gray with the uh, gray blasted bolsters, it has a very formal look to me. To me, this really looks like a gentleman's knife. But then when I go to open it, it's got such a stout, nice pull. Not too stout, not finger breaker. To me, this is a solid seven and a half. And to me, that's the perfect place to be. Of course, uh, everyone's scale is different. But <laughs> on my scale, this is right, right where I want it to be. Nice and stout coming in and great walk and talk going back out. But uh, I got to show you this blade. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've gleaned if you've watched this uh, show or listened to me at all for a while. Drop points and spear points are not, not never my favorite, never my first choice. But this kind of spear point, I'm, I'm trying to hold the hold it to the light so you, you only see the profile. There you go. That that sort of deep belly towards the tip, uh, to uh, the the spine and the cutting edge not in parallel but widening towards the tip. That is the kind. This is the perfect spear point to me because of that, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, and the first one will be the shallow reason. To me, it looks beautiful. I love it with that swedge and being. Uh, fully hollow ground M390. It is, it is gorgeous to look at. But the other reason why I like that sort of uh, spear point that swells toward, uh, swells out to a belly towards the tip, is that it, that means the cutting edge comes down at an angle from your knuckles, and therefore it makes it a more efficient cutter. Just think of a kukri except <laughs> you know miniaturized and less extreme in terms of in terms of angle. But it sort of gives you that recurve effect because uh, because the blade is canted downward. So it, to me, it, there's an aesthetic benefit and there's a practical benefit to that sort of bulbous uh, spear point. So really, really beautiful, beautiful job on the redesign of the classic dog like Jack. And I also think another part of that redesign is he he um, is the dog leg shape is very defined and. Now I see why. Now, aesthetically, I, I never cared for that. But getting it in hand, I realize it it is a 100% ergonomic uh, dream here. So this little pocket uh, accommodates your thumb and the, this, the fat and, and uh, muscle here in your thumb and puts the blade. It's almost like a more of a pistol grip for a slip joint. And it presents the blade at, at, at a great angle for cutting, an efficient angle for cutting. And then you add that angle I was talking about there. And you just get a very, very efficient cutter and something that feels very secure in hand with those ergonomics, with those dog leg ergonomics. Now, something interesting about this and the very first knife he came out with, the sharpshooter jack, which was the which is the uh, gunstock jack. That being a single blade and this being a single bladed uh, gun stock and dog, like you get to feel the real contours of the handle without uh, the spine of another blade that's folded inside the handle, interrupting the contours. So I really got to see from the uh, from the gun stock, Jack, the importance of those ergonomics and the importance of the shape of that handle. It's not just to look cool. It really is to fit in your hand just perfectly. And same thing here with the dog leg. 
Um, you've got the integral bolster liner thing going on here, blasted titanium. Amazing, amazing walk and talk. Just a beautiful blade. There, are, I think there are a few of these left. Uh, I know they. Oh wait, oh, what am I talking about? I'm, I'm now I'm getting ahead of myself. These have yet to be released. Uh, next week they're being released. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for those. Awesome, awesome knives. Okay, uh, second, I want to show off uh, two of three knives that were sent to me by Tier One, uh, Justin at Tier One Gear Reviews. I say two of three because the third one is over on a different shelf, but he sent me three of these to check out. They're knives of his own design uh, who uh, he had manufactured, or he, he had built by Old Squirrel Custom Knives, and he had the sheaths done by Guster Leather. But check these out. He's calling these the scythe. And you know how I feel about Pical style knives. And uh, these are his take of the Pical style. Um, and we'll talk about this, this one in a second. But he's got two, uh, two main versions, one with a ring and one without. Uh, I personally would opt for without. Uh, though the ring, if you don't use it, extends the handle. I always like uh, a ring for extended handles. I'm just not a big fan of the rings uh, in usage anymore. Um, I just don't feel adequately trained to use the ring without hurting myself. Uh, double edge is beautiful. Double edge sickle pickle shaped blade is just deadly coming and going. And... Uh, then you've got this beautiful marbled carbon fiber handle, uh, which is uh, the other version that I have that's over there. It does not have the ring, and it's got a coke. It's got a, um, not a coke, but it's got a wasp waist. kind of comes in and goes out and gives you some great contours to hold on to. So uh, very impressive design by Justin and just a beautiful uh, execution by Old Squirrel. I follow them on, I follow him on Instagram, and it was, it's great to have one of his, um, builds in hand now this uh one is in a custom leather sheath by guster leather which is just gorgeous look at this uh very stout black leather you've got beautiful red stitching and then you have this uh ulti clip mounted on a piece of leather that circumnavigates the sheath you could take it off and switch it around and have the ulti clip on the other side right no, actually, you can't, uh, right? No, 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 you can't. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't matter. That's a great way to mount that ulti clip on this beautiful sheath. And it follows the contours of a uh, jeans pocket. That's what it looks like to me. And this one is has a an acid wash, that double edge. And then it's got the red ray skin with the black lace. Just a beautiful uh, Sukamaki wrapped version of this site. So go to uh, Tier One Gear Reviews on Instagram and check him out. Follow him out. Not only does he have, oh, and also on YouTube, not only does he have great videos and knife content, uh, but it's great to see his uh, his process in getting these things together. So uh, check out uh, Tier One and uh old squirrel and guster leather while you're at it all on instagram so very cool stuff thank you um thank you justin for entrusting these to me they are beautiful okay last up uh i just where is it i just dug this out um because i was going through my wife's knives for last week's show and uh found this and i frankly forgot i made this for her a number of years ago but this is a knife i made for my wife it's called the bella because that's her, that's what I call her. And uh, it's pretty extreme, I gotta say. Uh, I attempted something, uh, I started this with a file and I think I finished it with a with an angle grinder. Um, but here, let me show you. It's got a cool uh, handle here with a green liner. Her eyes are green, green and purple liners there. And uh, you can see some of the green come, come through that Kiranite. It's got some mosaic pins and then it's got that extreme blade. Uh, I was thinking, you know, you could, you get the benefits of a, of a Tonto and a hooked blade, uh, you know, like a, a, what do you call it? Hawkbill blade all in one. I, I always really loved a recurve Tonto. And I guess I took it to the extreme with this, uh, but it's a very comfortable knife in hand. I got to say, I, I do have some chops when I try, I think, uh, but maybe I think my chops are just with pencils and I should have other people, uh, build my creations, but, um, 
I like this knife. It was cool to find it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, baby, why don't you carry that knife? She's like, oh, because uh, I don't want to damage it. Like, oh, OK. It's a good enough reason, I guess, for now. So she carries her R.J. Martin $20 Kershaw instead. And, and I appreciate that. That's good design also. All right. Coming up, uh, let's talk right now about favorite designers, high end and low end. It occurs to me, uh, you know, I was telling the story about uh, getting rid of four zero tolerance selling four zero tolerance hinderer knives so that I could actually buy a hinderer. And it occurred to me that I have that situation sort of throughout my collection. I have high end and low end knives from some of my favorite designers. And in some cases, there are obvious favorites, but in others, there are not. Sometimes the um, the low end knife is more compelling or just as compelling as the expensive one um, or the high end one. And the first that occurred to me uh, was Ernest Emerson because I love Ernest Emerson. And uh, I have a nicely sized collection of uh, Emerson knives, uh, recently reduced by two from an unscrupulous YouTuber. Uh, but still, I have a good number of them. And uh, this is a great representation. I love this knife. This is the Tiger. And it's got a, a, a fat sort of upswept number eight blade, CQC eight blade. So it's sort of like the banana blade, clip point blade but with the uh, CQC 13 handle and ergonomics. So just to me, an ideal knife. And I remember uh, seeing Ernest Emerson say that when he designed this and first started making that, that was his EDC for about a year. And I carried that for a good long time after I got it uh, on, you know, pretty regularly. And it is a great knife, man. It is so thin behind the edge here, even though it's got that, um, even though it's a chisel edge, I know some people don't care for the chisel edge. It's so thin. It's so cutty. It cuts so well. Uh, I love this knife. Um, it does track a little slightly differently through material because of that uneven edge. But, uh, you know, after one cut, you can accommodate for that. Uh, this one is a little stiff right now. I, I, uh, I tightened it up the other day. And sometimes I do that with the Emersons. I tighten it up and then just kind of work them back into a into where I want them. They are, they can be persnickety beasts, uh, but I love, I love my Emerson knives. Uh, so if they're too persnickety for you, you might like the ZT versions of them or the Emerson versions of, or Kershaw versions. So uh, Mr. Emerson, Ernest Emerson did a, uh, a bunch of licensed, licensed a bunch of his designs to Kershaw, whoops, sorry, my left hand. Uh, and to zero tolerance, three to zero tolerance, the 6, 20, 30, and 40. Yeah, 20, 30, and 40, I have those. And uh, and then a whole bunch of Kershaws. And this is the one, I had a few of them. This is the only one I have left. I love this little knife. I haven't used it in a long time. Uh, but it's a teeny tiny little wicked three-inch clip point blade. It's got the, the wave on it. Uh, you can flick it open like that, or you can wave it out of your pocket. It's got smooth washer action. I'm pretty sure those are uh, plastic washers. Um, you know, it's cheap. It's, I don't know, $25 knife, uh, at, but and it's 8CR, I, but it's got his design. And uh, do I need anything more than this on my day, for my day-to-day? -day? I, I personally do not. Um, so it works great. Also, it gets, with that thin pointy blade, it gets in some tight places I need it to uh, without any difficulty. Uh, double-edged, though. Not double-edged. Um, V-ground edge here. Uh, you do not have in any of the uh, Kai branded um, Emerson designs, you don't have any chisels, uh, chisel edges. So those of you who hate the chisel edge makes you bristle, uh, go for the ZTs or the Kershaws. So that's Emerson. Now, here's a good one. Um, this is Bill Harsey. I love Bill Harsey. And I'm, I always say uh, you can... Whenever I bring up Bill Harsey, I say you can identify his knives easily. He's got a style. And these two knives do really show that off. So on the high end, you've got the Spartan Harsey folder. Uh, Spartan Blades and uh, Bill Harsey got together on the dagger and on this knife and on the smaller version of this knife and have created some legends together. This, to me, is 
one of the one of the best knives out there. It's 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 up there with the Sebenza and it's up there with the VSEP and it's just amazing. And 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 it's up there with the uh, with hinderers too. It's got the feel of a hinderer and a you know colliding with the Sebenza. Very 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 solid. Very very smooth on washers. Uh, it took a minute to get smooth, but not long at all. Uh, but you've got these beautiful long flowing lines. Um, you've got sort sort of business down here with the choils and the finger grooves, but overall you have that nice sweeping design with a slight recurve. This is this is a high end knife. It's you know sometimes it's catch as catch can if they're between batches of them, and it's not inexpensive. Um, but if you really love his designs, they can be had uh, in a number of uh, in a number of budget uh, minded production blades. And here is one of them. This is made by CRKT branded Ruger. This is the all cylinders, and this is a Harzi design. Again, you've got that beautiful profile. You can see the two of them together. If you look at the two of them together, you can see especially around the pivot area and the finger choil area and the and the thumb ramp. And just the overall uh, it has very Harzian lines, uh, but can be had for much less. I think this is a uh, $60, uh, $70 uh, knife here. You've got VEF serrations in this version. That's those four big scoops um, with the three big points, those are really effective and quite, um, they can be quite nasty um, and very, very effective. If you want to see how VEF serrations work, check out Matthew Culbertson on uh, YouTube. He does, he has been given special permission by Jeff VEF, I think his name is, or Mr. VEF, uh, to put those uh, kind of serrations in his own personal knives and then show them off on YouTube. Uh, so he does that and he, he he does cut tests with those serrations and they're insane. They really work well. I totally get it. If serrations are not your bag, these giant ones are probably definitely not your bag. But beautiful contoured uh, layered G10 here. Uh, we've got steel bolsters. Look at that, pr that proprietary pivot. Looks like a uh, revolver cylinder. Hence the term or the name all cylinders. The big buzzkill about this knife is that it is tip down only, uh, just tone deaf, man. And and I'm, that's not a diss of Bill Harzi, you know, certainly. But uh, you know, this this was a bad move. That was a bad move. And I think you know, oftentimes uh, gun companies that put out knives through knife companies um, make make little mistakes that maybe knife guys would make if they were making guns for gun people gun people be like would might might be like why did you put the safety here or you know that kind of thing uh so in this case a uh, little behind the times there with the clip placement i really wish there was a tip up uh uh tip up uh, option for this because i would be i would be much more enthusiastic about that knife all right but those are two options if you love if you love the Bill Harzi Jr. designs, um, you can get this. Uh, if you just want a little fix, you can get this. All cylinders. All right. Okay, next up is by a gentleman we've had on the show. I love his designs. K. Maxrom is what he goes by. His name is Jonathan Renaudin. He's from France. And uh, this is his concept pelican in titanium. Uh, you know, I've talked about this one a lot. I love it. I love that uh, uh, Tonto blade shape. It looks very, reminds me a bit of the, um, of the Umnum Zan I have in, uh, in Tonto Point. And uh, indeed, he said he was inspired by that blade for this design. Something that you see in pretty much all K-Max from designs is that thumb swale in the back. Uh, whether it's a thumb swale or just a double peaked spine, uh, you get that sort of feature and i adore it what can i say and then it's a concept so man they just build knives so well it is buttery smooth buttery buttery smooth the ergonomics are awesome on this of course that that's a that's a k max rom thing but the execution is so good that the ergonomics are allowed to shine um you can flip it you can use that uh fuller or the thumb stud 
I find with this one, the thumb stud is the most difficult because of that lock bar. This knife comes in around 187 bucks. And, uh, you know, so it's not an inexpensive knife. But if you love that design, you love K-Max ROM uh, designs or just this one, or you love concept and you want, look at what they give you. You can get this in a liner lock version with beautiful micarta, black, or as you see here, natural, uh, with 154 cm blade steel instead of S35, and you get the same blade shapes. So you can get either the clip point like this, or you can get the tanto like that in an inexpensive version. This run, this will run you about 70 bucks. Great action, and since it's a liner lock, there's no trouble using the uh, <laughs> unless you use your left hand. No trouble using the uh, thumb studs. There you go, and. Again, you got that fuller. Uh, this one is uh, patinaing nicely, that uh, that micarta. And actually, you know, I was talking about how much I like that Tonto blade. I really do, but I'm thinking I might be moving this knife along. I do have to lighten the load a little bit. I want to raise some fundage for other stuff and, uh, you know, projects that we're doing here and stuff. And that knife, I just don't carry that much. This one, I do. I carry this one quite a bit. So I'm thinking maybe I uh, give this to it, not give it. I sell that to someone, to a home that's going to carry it and use it and love it and uh, report back from the front. But uh, 189 bucks here versus 75 bucks or something here. So a great spread, 154 versus um, S35, you know, Pick your poison. I think they're both awesome. Okay, next up is one of my favorite designers. These are all one of my favorite designers, so I'm going to stop saying that. Next up is Les George. Love Les George. And I fell in love with Les George's designs um, through this knife, the VSEP. Excuse me. And this was the knife that if not, he does he denies the fact that this was the first mid tech, but if this wasn't the first mid tech, it was really the knife that popularized the concept and certainly introduced the concept to me. And now those waters have been muddied uh, just through OEMing and all this. Uh, uh, but basically the concept behind mid tech knife is a custom knife uh, maker who is working on exquisite knives that take a lot of time uh, have designs such as this that are more simple to execute and, and therefore can have parts made out of house uh, and then bring them in house, refine those parts and then assemble them and sharpen the knife and, and do all that kind of stuff so that you're not spending all your time cutting out titanium handles. You can have those things cut out, sent to you. You refine it, grind it, polish it, do whatever you got to do to it, uh, assemble it, and then you have your knife that you can sell, not as much as uh, a custom in, in terms of what you're asking, but it's still high end and it still has the custom maker's hands all over it, ensuring its quality. So that's that was uh, that was what this was really known for um, and also really known just to be a beautiful knife. And I remember when this came out, people were like, Sabenza killer? And I, I was like, certainly is. To me, this is a much better looking knife than the Sabenza at the time. Now I love my Sabenza, but to me, this is still probably one of my most coveted and oh, one of my most favorite designs, I guess I should say. Love this. But if you can't get this, don't want this, but you still like Les George's aesthetic, uh, which is uh, definitely informed by his time in the military, um, you can check out a number of Kershaw knives, low end I should say budget-minded Kershaw knives of his design. Here's one that I have. This was a gift from my awesome brother-in-law, James. This is the Weston. It's a speed safe. So it's got the, the spring in there, spring assist. And man, I think this is a very handsome knife. I've commented that uh, I would love to see this a little bit larger and made by ZT without the, without the assist. What a beautiful knife this is. And you can see some of his military lineage and his love for the M3 trench knife and the 1918 trench knife, the one over my shoulder with the knuckle duster. Uh, he makes his own versions of those knives and uh, some of the um, design cues from those sort of militaristic knives make their way down into his budget designs like this. The Weston, that bayonet blade is just beautiful. And then you see his uh, thumb ramp here which uh, you can see over here in the VSEP. It's a little more subtle here, but it creates a, 
a great place for your thumb and saber grip, and then a great place to pull back on with your thumb in a Filipino grip with the thumb on the spine. A very nice neutrally shaped handle that really does accommodate that that stepping down really does accommodate the hand nicely and give you very good purchase while remaining mostly neutral. Uh, on this knife, the speed safe doesn't really bother me. Um, but like I said, I'd love to see a high end version of this um, by zero tolerance, maybe a little bit larger. So here you have the the uh, less George VSEP. You know, and when you find it, I think this is probably like a four hundred dollar knife, three hundred and seventy five dollar knife. I know now he's making them in flippers and doing a lot more milling and interesting stuff. So I don't know how much they are at this point, but they're they're high end. And then the Kershaw, this is like a thirty dollar knife. So it's if you like his aesthetic, it can be had at, at any range. And I love that. By the way, Boker is a great company for that kind of thing. Boker, Kershaw, CRKT. Um, my absolute grail knife only exists to me in my collection through Boker, and that's the Squale, which I talk about all the time. All right, uh, another designer that I love, Dirk Pinkerton, and he's everywhere, uh, beyond EDC, Concept, Kaiser, uh, and then his custom knives, uh, which I have, uh, let me just show this real quick. Uh, here's a custom knife I have by him. His grinding abilities are second to none um when i had uh, sean kendrick on the show he mentioned dirk pinkerton uh and and sean kendrick great guy not you know not freely dishing out warm fuzzies uh said wow yeah dirk pinkerton he's an amazing grinder and you can see that and his uh here i'll, I'll drum up some business for him maybe dirk pinkerton's custom knives which can be had by going to his website are very reasonably priced if you like them I know custom knives are intimidating sometimes because they can be so expensive, um, but fixed blades are always a little less. And uh, um, Dirk Pinkerton's fixed blades, which are incredible, are very reasonably priced. So go check them out if you're interested. Um, but again, in the production world, you can find him high end and you can also find him low end. Um, I'm going to talk about a high end design. This one I got in a trade with Dave. Uh, this old sword blade reviews and this is the inversion the kaiser inversion and it's a folding pical style fighting knife or utility knife it really makes an excellent utility knife i'm sure most people are not going to carry this um primarily as a utility knife because of the design it looks weird admit it it looks weird you expect the blade edge to be on the other side don't you because of the finger grooves and everything but this is intended for that Pakal style uh, where it's tip down edge in and you're using gross motor motion and the arcing, uh, the arcing motion of your joints to go caveman on someone you're defending yourself from. But it's obviously a very dressed up version uh, in titanium terraced, beautifully terraced, um, concentrically terraced titanium. Very cool. Uh, and a nice um, sculpted pocket clip that you can switch. Um, you know, you got the insert and everything, and then it also ships with this little brass uh, wave. So you can use it like that, or you can wave it out of your pocket. Now, I said that it's a uh, useful utility knife. In this grip, it really, really is. Now, do this to open a box. Look at that. It might look a little funky, but yeah, it would make a great EDC. Uh, it's pretty light. It's titanium. It's got a decent uh, size. Um, but it's not too big. Uh, that handle is just four fingers. Uh, and then that's a $200 knife right there. And then uh, for, uh, what did I get this for? I think I bought this for 50 bucks uh, when it first came out. Uh, this is from Concept. I love Concept, as I mentioned before. And this is the street, street, what is this? The Main Street, sorry. Oh, it's right there on the screen. I could have just looked. Thank you, Jim. Uh, this is the Main Street. Uh, this one is from the first run where it's mistakenly labeled the Little Main Street, as you can see, which uh, makes this collect. This is worth uh, several million dollars now because it's mis misprinted. Uh, but something that uh, Pinkerton is known for also is that uh, Warncliffe, that straight edge Warncliffe shape. Um, and you see it in a lot, the shard, you see it in a lot of his uh, designs. And I love it. 
it's so useful, uh, both practically and tactically. I know corny sounds corny, but it's true. It, it really is. It, it is, it is, uh, I'm becoming convinced that it's the perfect blade shape. Uh, even, even though sometimes it's not my favorite to look at, I think, I think it's becoming the perfect blade shape because uh, it's great in a slash. It's great in a thrust. It's great in reverse grip if you were to use this like this. Uh, but it's it's also superior as a utility thing. You got to go outside and cut some cardboard uh, before you, so you can fit it in the recycling bin. This is what you want. You want that long, straight edge. Uh, so you're getting to use as much of that edge. It's not glancing away. Uh, with any sort of blade or edge curvature as your arm arcs away from you as you're cutting through cardboard, uh, you really maximize the length of the blade with that. Um, so the only thing it's not good at is rocking cuts and, you know, spreading butter, that kind of thing. Though this would be good. You could spread peanut butter with the back of this blade. Um, anyway, I don't, neither here nor there. This was beautifully patinaed. Um, this, uh, this, burlap my car was beautifully patinaed then i threw it in my pocket of a wet bathing suit and it bleached it and it, that sort of stuck in my craw a little bit but here you go uh for definitely less than 100 i think this was about 50 bucks when i got it I, I haven't looked it up but there's the large and the small version of it which can be had by an excellent manufacturer uh concept and then uh the company from which concept sprung because uh some guys left kaiser to start concept uh, you can get the inversion. Uh, but these are just examples, especially uh, with this designer. Uh, but most of these designers have uh, more design. All of these designers have more designs across different companies. Um, so these are just examples. Okay, last up here is Demco, Andrew Demco. Probably, not even probably. Most definitely, I have the most knives designed by him because I have a sprawling cold steel collection and then I have a budding Demco collection. Uh, it's only a, a two knife sub collection, but uh, hopefully that grows in the future with the AD22 XL. If they ever did that, it would be super cool. But um, if you don't know the AD22, look it up. Very cool. Uh, so high end Demco knives or Andrew Demco, the designer high end here is the AD20 MG. MG means machine ground. That means that blade was uh, beveled and ground, was beveled on a machine, and then the edge was put on uh, in the Demco shop. Um, you can get an AD20 with a custom blade. That's a, a blade that is ground in the shop fully. Um, that'll cost you more. Uh, but what a, what a beautiful knife this is. It was, it was, um, it kind of fell into my lap. Uh, Lavender Pants, uh, a, a user here on YouTube, uh, let me know that this was at River Edge Cutlery in Ohio, actually. And uh, I bought it. He bought it for me, sent it to me. Of course, I, I gave him the funds. And, oh, it was such a nice, nice surprise. I remember I was at work and just kind of had my head buried in something. And I text came through. And this was before the days where I just I leave my phone upside down now. Uh, but text came through and I saw this picture and he's like, you know, I, this could be yours. And so I got it and just incredible feel stoutness action. I mean, you've got this really nice thick blade that is very sharp. It's a great cutter, uh, not the sliciest thing in the world, but that's not what you have this for beefy construction. Look at those standoffs, uh, nice weight and then just delicate butter smooth action no i i make a mistake delicate is the wrong word it is not delicate but it is smooth as glass on bearings so it's got you know it's it's got all the rough and tumble uh features of a super hard use knife here but it's got that super refined action so i like the it's not a contradiction but i like the combination you know you oftentimes think of the most stout hard use knives as washer knives uh but this one with the bearings Oh man, it's just a dream. Love this thing. And I love its production baby brother, the 80 20.5 uh, made in Taiwan for those guys. Um, but I did not choose that as my low end because that one's 125 bucks or more. 
And that's not so low end. So I went with a cold steel design and one that can be had easily. And that is the cold steel Voyager large. In this case, the clip point. You can get this in um, you can get this in the Tonto edge. You can get this in the drop point. You used to be able to get it in a four inch Vaquero. And I am reacquiring my old four inch Vaquero from my buddy Ian, uh, who I sold it two years ago. Uh, but now that they're discontinued, I want it back. <laughs> and he graciously offered to sell it back to me. So uh, that's happened with another. That happened with our military. I, I sold him my military and then bought it back from him. Uh, but anyway, so this is a $60 knife. So you have a $400 knife here and a uh, $60 knife here. But what you're getting is the same thing in a way. You're getting that Demco innovation. Here you have the triad lock. A uh, super incredibly strong lock. Some people say it's the strongest in the industry, but who knows? Uh, he keeps besting himself. The scorpion lock is very, very strong. Uh, this, the the shark, the shark lock is incredibly strong. And now Cold Steel has the Atlas lock, which, by all accounts, is incredibly strong. But he really was the was the first guy to say, "Hey, on this sort of lock, the first and only guy actually on this sort of lock, meaning a back lock." Uh, to make it even stronger, because backlock is already one of the strongest locks out there, um, to make it stronger, let's reduce the force that the blade puts on the blade spring by interrupting it with a stop pin and putting a stop pin between the blade and the spring. Unlike, say, the classic uh, buck here, 112, where it's just blade tang against lock spring. You can see there you've got the you've got the stop pin. So what am I saying here? I'm saying whether you go for a $60 Andrew Demko design knife in one of the Voyagers or one of the other um, budget-minded cold steel knives, or whether you put all the money out and you get this kind of knife, you can have um, not only that really cool, useful, robust uh, Demko design, but you can also have innovation. You can have these these locks that he invented and revolutionized things with. So to me, that is very very exciting. Uh, th that's what I like about uh, this this collection. You can or this uh, hobby. You can choose people whose work you like, just like music, just like art, and then pursue them at whatever level you're capable. So there you have it. Well, thanks for coming down this uh, this road with me and checking this out. What do you have in your uh, collection that is high end and low end? Which designers do you think do it best? Uh, good enough that you want the expensive stuff and you want the cheap stuff. Um, cheap in cost, of course. Uh, let me know. And also, uh, please do yourself a favor. Oh, I'm pointing the wrong direction and download uh, the podcast right there on those podcast apps. And listen if you can't watch. All right, for Jim Mork and his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, I implore you, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast